Well, howdy, 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 near the senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends. And this morning, I am going to be foregoing my usual thing of saying, hey, like, comment, subscribe, and check out my Patreon and PayPal and Amazon wishlist and, and all that because I'm going to the ER today. <laughs> My leg has not gotten better. It's been a week, and in fact, it is more swollen today. It hurts more today. It's more red today. It's not hot, though. So I don't know what's going on. But something that doesn't heal for a week like this, and in fact is getting worse, that's not a good sign. That's kind of an indication of bad things. So I'm going to go to the ER. Hopefully, I'm going to be just, you know, checked out, told what, and then sent home. Being, uh, like, admitted would suck. So, yay. But I'm going to be spending probably most of the day there. If not, all day. So, yay on that. But, I'll talk about this as well. I took my walk up to Walmart last night. Maybe I shouldn't have, because the day prior, when I'd been walking up on snow and been staggering everywhere, my leg felt fine and everything was okay. Last night when I went walkies, my leg was doing better, it looked like, but it hurt worse. And when I went to bed and took my sock off and looked, it was redder and more swollen. No heat, though. So, I don't know what's going on. And then this morning, yeah, it's not good. So, thumbs up for that. Hopefully, I am, like, not going to die of something horribly. I'd like to reach at least 70, but uh, we shall see. Encroaching mortality and the thought of things going so wrong in your body that you may not be existing in like a year or so is scary. I mean, it's, I've talked about how you know, if you're born at six o'clock in the morning and then you're, it's game over at six o'clock at night, uh, even without health issues, it's still coming up on five o'clock right now, you know, like it or not. I mean, I might be lucky. Genetically, my, my genetic father is still alive, and he's at least 20 years older than I am, and he's had horrible things happen in his life. With He's been injured with toxic chemicals when he was a painter, and that's done some damage up here and such, but he's up in his 80s. So, who knows? Maybe I'll be lucky, and it's not something horrific that says I'm going to die soon. So here's hoping, yay. But I, I have to be at least uh, partially aware because things that don't heal are never a good sign. <sighs> Past that, as stated, did my walk up to Walmart last night. It was warmer than it had been, kinda sorta. At first it was cold, but it wasn't a bad walk. Nothing was freezing. As I got further to Walmart, things got crazier because again, on the main road that goes up to Walmart, they had the plows, that's the word, shoving the snow off, but they shove it off onto the sidewalk. There's no shoulder. And so there's no real place to walk. You're either going to stagger and, and risk falling, or you're going to walk on the road. And there's cars on the road, so you stagger around. <clears throat> because it was cold and wet, there weren't that many cars out, I did as much walking on the road on that part as I could. But oh boy, that leg. <sighs> so yay. But past that, I mean... Life is still life. I'm going to walk to the emergency room. I'm going to be bringing at least a book with me. I don't have a portable game machine or even a, a phone that plays anything. I just have a flip phone that I have that I pay every month for 
because I need I I need it because you have to have two-factor authentication from YouTube or you don't get paid and while I only get paid like once a year anymore at least once a year is better than never at all so yeah I got a flip phone and it doesn't do much anything but I don't use it for anything else I don't even take it with me when I go out walk so if I fall and, and like break a hip I got no way to call for help so maybe I should bring the phone with me <laughs> I tried to do as much creative thinking as possible one of the things that I have been thinking about is that character that just came out of nowhere yesterday morning <clears throat> Miguel Perez who is a who in his like 23 is a professional professional wrestler in Reynoso Mexico uh, expressed as a cryptid and then because they accidentally eat one of their family members leaves so that they don't end up eating anyone else and so make their way through time up to Brookerton, South Carolina, joining the cryptid community there and trying to bring professional wrestling, luchador professional wrestling, lucha libre, the professional wrestling to the cryptid world. It's been an uphill battle, but it's been working through time. One of the problems is cryptids are kind of, they're not really simple they're basic because they are unable to make conceptual leaps and unable to do things their entire potential as a people in a species is funneled right back into their faces pushing them backwards unable to go forward because of all of that keeping them back Try to remember where I was going with that. So they are simple, not because there's anything physically wrong with them, but because they're just unable to make these conceptual leaps with the, because of their other universal parts. And they are made of extra universal material as it is cryptid material. It's not really extra universal. It's the cryptid material, but the cryptid energy comes through doors from the inside. It's not originally from our universe, so thumbs up on that. But one of the things that happens because of this, trying to originally bring the idea of, okay, you're going to fight well, that's taken on a life of its own because trying to get the idea that you're just fighting not to kill and eat each other, but to try and win points, hard to get through to them. And so there is a thing because they would just, you know, get into the ring and start wailing on each other until one of them was so weak from being battered that the other would just eat them. And people watch that, it put butts in seats and people will pay, so now, yeah. And there is a lot of cryptids who will get into the ring and fight just because they get the opportunity to eat the other one. They know that they might be eating themselves, but that's okay. <clears throat> and so, yeah, cryptid boxing and a lot of cryptid professional wrestling is just uh, two cryptids getting into a ring and beating each other bloody and ragging until one of them can no longer defend themselves at which point the other one eats them and yeah it puts butts in seats and makes people money so it's going along but the actual professional style wrestling thing is slowly making headway and it is becoming more popular. So that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. La Pantera, the wrestler, is called this because they are a were jaguar. So were panther. Sorry about that. Not a jaguar. They're a were panther. They spend most of their time as a human being, of course, and then becoming the hybrid human panther. I've talked about the werewolf Reginald, who is a very high-powered uh, cryptid individual, but because of their neuroses and neurotic tics and such, finds much more comfort because of their anxieties and the like, just hanging around with human beings. He's, he's uh, 
a very interesting individual that way. A lot of nervous tics and anxieties. But they're a werewolf, only they're not a human being that turns into a hybrid human wolf. They are a wolf that turns into a hybrid human being wolf. And it's that form that they'll sit on the park benches on Main Street after eating someone just to watch the world go by as they digest. You do have to take time when you're a cryptid after you eat somebody because number one, it's just almost overwhelmingly delicious to eat anything human related, especially just actual human beings. It physically feels good because of all of the compounds in our flesh. It feels good in their mouths. It feels good going down their throats. It feels good entering into their bellies. And of course, as they digest human meat, the compounds released also release a ton of reward neurotransmitters as well as the equivalents of prolactin and oxytocin, those things that are just the socializing sorts of neurotransmitters. And of course, because of the released compounds, they are effectively for two hours feeling the equivalent of taking a mid-power euphoric opium related, a low level hallucinogenic, so everything looks just a little bit better, and uh, also a functional and working aphrodisiac. And so for two hours, the cryptids just have to zone out while they digest a bit so they can get moving. Now where was I going with that? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, it was Reginald. So after after he eats somebody, it's just he lounges on a park bench. Well, not a park bench, a bench on Main Street, just watching the world go by while he's just just uh, totally zoned out on everything that's flooding through his system. You got to remember, for cryptids, there are no physical negatives toward eating a human being. None. So that's joyous. There are social things that can hurt them, and they have a cultural thing that says act within your nature. This is actually, not that they know it, a genetic imperative that is also taught because of the feelings that you get if you try to go against the genetic imperative that lets the cryptids know that act within your nature. If you don't, if your nature as a type of cryptid is to not hurt people, and you do, you feel emotionally, mentally, and physically bad. Going against your nature is not good. You find out what your nature is, but you're also just stressed and told. Act within your nature. So, thumbs up on that. And even cryptids like the one cryptid I speak of who is trying her best to advocate for stopping cryptid on cryptid violence even she who loves to devour human flesh who tells all other cryptids if you feel bad eat someone if you can't sleep eat someone if you're too sleepy eat someone that's what they're for fill your belly even she though she eats about you know four people a month isn't just out there devouring randomly because it, she's still acting within her nature and to eat more would go against that. And even though she doesn't know it's a genetic imperative, it is. I forgot to open up 24 hours. No, I think I did open up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab, and I'm going to go through and thank everybody who left me comments in the past 24 hours, and I'm cutting this short because my leg hurts, and I need to do a bit of things before I head off to the emergency room, as well as swing by and pay the rent. <sighs> Yay. So, let me call up my chrome and get that done. We have a clavicle skeletoni. <laughs> I like the name. Thumbs up. Thank you much. There is Yamil. Greatly appreciated. S-D-A-L. Thumbs up and thank you. Philatron128. Thank you much. Isaac Nixon. Greatly appreciated. Cake. Thumbs up. And boy, I wish it had continued feeling better. 
and J A double Y. Thumbs up, thank you. Doing my best. Flora Mew. I had a lot of fun editing. It's one of the reasons it takes so long to edit these things. But good to see you in the comments. There is Demetrio, V A D A L, and then an A with an accent over it. Don't know how to pronounce that, but thank you much. There is Shinra, thumbs up, thank you much. You take care, and thank you very, very much. There is Sebastian Ferris, good to see you in the comments again. Ben B, thumbs up, and oh, here's hoping things continue. And Sylvia Wilkinson, thank you, greatly appreciate. Good to see you in the comments, and we shall see what continues to happen. Thumbs up, thank you all, greatly appreciate it. Get me out of my head, into the world, and dealing with real people, if only for a short time, and if only in text. Thumbs up. So my day is going to be shot because, yeah, as soon as I finish uploading this, I'm going to head on out to swing by, pay my rent, and then head up to the emergency room where I'm likely going to be there all day and hopefully not all night and hopefully not just admitted. So we shall see what happens. But no matter what, where you are with your situation, if people are getting really sick, just try your you know, six foot distancing, try wearing a mask. Maybe you won't get sick, maybe you won't make others sick. If people are getting hurt where you are, try to avoid that particular area. And of course, if you're out of walking, listen for the mournful howl of that bus horn, the bus with your name on it. Hopefully, if you hear it, it's somebody else is calling for. Otherwise, brace for impact. It won't hurt for long, but your corpse is gonna get smeared. So, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is a very good thing.